All right, all right, all right. Good morning, church fam. Good morning, church fam. Hey, uh, first and foremost, just want to thank y'all for being here. Um, I always say it's not by happenstance that you're here. It just happens to be his plan that you're here. Um, so I just want to welcome you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, it means the world that you would be here at More Church celebrating this Sunday with us. Um, Pastor Whitney, uh, Pastor Trustin, just uh, thank y'all for trusting me. Okay. Thank you for trusting me. <laughs> Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for trusting me and allowing me to have this opportunity. Um, yeah, not yet. I'm a man. Uh, I, I might be pounding my chest a lot because I'm going to have to get, you know, but all that to be said, man, is uh, super grateful that y'all would trust me and, and allow me to share what I believe God has been trying to walk me through. Uh, you know, with my stubborn self, he's having to pull me along. Um, but hey, if if you haven't had a chance to get to know, meet me or anything like that, my name is Enrique. I get to be one of the associate pastors here, and it's an honor and privilege, an honor and privilege to serve this house. But more importantly, it's even an honor and privilege to be able to serve with my wife, Cassandra, who uh, oversees the Sisterhood of More. Like Pastor Whitney was saying, this is our fourth week in the Summer Psalms, and uh, Pastor Trustin led it off, Pastor Whitney, and then Pastor Phil. I mean, they each brought a different, different message and a great message. And uh, what I would tell you is that if you miss any of those, I would encourage you to go uh, to our website and get caught back up on those, because those are definitely some things that you want to look at. Um, man, he talked about camp. Last week's celebration, camp celebration was something else. I mean, uh, Pastor Tim always says that there is no thing such as a junior Holy Spirit. And can I tell you, there wasn't more true last week. I mean, last week, the testimonies that were being said from all the youth that was there, the kids, the baptisms, I mean, the Holy Spirit that's within us is within them. There isn't a junior Holy Spirit, and you could see that life change was great. Well, today we're going to be diving into Psalms 127. Um, God has been uh, talking to me a lot uh, through this one, and before we get jump into that, what I want you all to know is that this is just a topic that I've been struggling with the most uh, in my life. And uh, it's a constant prayer of mine that I'd be able to not only uh, read about it, but try to live it out. And it's also my hope that through my transparency, that I don't create any fence, but more importantly, that uh, you walk out with a little bit of God's truth with you, take it home with you today. So if we can, let's go ahead and let's uh, begin in prayer. Father God, we thank you for our, our families. We thank you for our pastors. We thank you for all the problems that we have, Father God. We just, we don't thank you for those problems, God. We just pray for the problems that we have. And we pray for the problems of uh, the ones who don't think they have any. Father God, we pray for the one among us who needs you the most and for the one who doesn't think they need you at all. Father God, we pray for the most courageous and for the most fearful, Father God. We pray that each one of us finds and applies your truth so that we can live and encounter our true selves and our authentic happiness. Father God, I ask that you search us, God, and know our hearts, test us, and know our anxious thoughts. See if there's any offense in us and lead us in the way of everlasting. We lift up these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Hey, so look, as a, in preparation for today, what I've learned is that not only in addition to the book of Psalms, I mean, book of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes, King Solomon author, also authored Psalms 127. And in doing the research for this, I mean, I had to go back to three books. And again, the books of the Proverbs, Psalms, and Ecclesiastes, these, in my opinion, are like God's combination punches of truth. And um, what I would tell you is that is if you hadn't had a stern talking from your father lately, go and read those three. And I promise you that you'll get a stern talking to. That's that's definitely for sure. Um, and here's the other thing that I kind of learned is I kind of feel like that's where Trustin and Whitney have been grabbing these bricks of truth and have just kind of been chunking at us at them. The one, for the past couple of months, they've been throwing these uh, bricks of truth. And I believe that those are the source because, I mean, they really make you assess the way that you're living. I wasn't going to say anything, but I kind of feel like I need to. What I've come to find out about these bricks of truth is they're just, they're fundamental truths. And these fundamental truths are meant to stretch us, meant to challenge us. But can I tell you that in the stretching and in the challenging, offense can be found. You know what I mean? And so either um, you could be offended and isolate yourselves, or you could be offended and spread offense and take others with you. Or what we could do is take those truths, those brick truths, and build a solid foundation for us to stand on, to rely on, 
to live on, but more importantly, to be a light, his light for others so they can come and stand with us. All right, let's get back to Psalms 127. So Psalms 127, here's a little history lesson, you know what I mean? So there was one, so uh, King Solomon wrote uh, Psalms 127. It just happens to be one of 15 songs, and they're called the Songs of Ascent. And the reason why they're called Songs of Ascent is because when the people of Israel were going uh, to the annual uh, festivals at the temple, they would have to climb up the mountain to go to Jerusalem. And so what they would do is they would sing this song on their ascent. And one thing, you know, in doing the reading of this text, what I've really stood out to me is that they were singing songs of praise on the way to their destination. They didn't sing once they got there. And that's because I believe they didn't believe the lie that's so easy to believe of, hey, once I get this done, I'll be good. Once I'm able to uh, fix this, then I'll have time. Once I buy this house, save this money, get into that school, send this last email, finish this last work task, then I'll have time to praise him. And what I realize is that's just so naturally for us to say and do, to include me, but even more so, Solomon being the wisest king ever, he failed for that very same lie. He failed for the, for the, for the same okie doke. And like most parents, you know, they, they want your children, you want your children to learn from your mistakes. So he wrote Psalms 127. And so Psalms 127 reads this. Yeah. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It is in vain for you to rise early to retire late, to eat the bread of anxious labor, for he gives to his beloved even in their sleep. Behold, children are a heritage and a gift from the Lord, the fruit of the room a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is filled with him. Uh, they will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies at the gate. At first glance, Hold on. I just need to be real with y'all. I'm sorry. This is going to be emotional for me. Just because of the things that I'm struggling with, with work and with family. And so, man, as I read this, you know, as I read Psalms 127, I can't help but think that they are two distinct uh, topics. But the truth is, Solomon, Solomon ties them together. He ties them together with one solid common truth, one thread of saying, hey, without God at the center of all of your doing, planning, striving, and grinding, we do it all in vain. And the sad truth is, is that includes raising a family. On the flip side, Solomon utilizes the same psalm to say, hey, with God at the center of it, when you invite him in and when we give him his rightful place, but more yet, when we operate out of the right mindset, we can rest in his blessings. You know, it's crazy how God will uh, speak to you one thing when you read a verse. And then later on in life, when you go back and you read that same verse, it tells you something totally different. And what I find out is it's, it's not that it's crazy. Because the truth is, we're the crazy ones to think that his word can't speak to us to the very thing that we're dealing with in the very time that we're dealing with it. I remember the first time... Um, reading Psalms 127. And this is what the enemy was throwing at me, that I had screwed things up with my boys for overextending too much of my truth and not enough of my love, that I had made life harder on my wife by focusing too much on my career and not enough about us, and that I had spent way too much of my life just working and busting my butt in vain. But your boy's standing up here so y'all know that's not the end of the story, right? In my, personal, in my personal journey, I struggled with having the right mindset to allow God to be at the center of my everything. And I will tell you two things that I believe the, not having the right mindset was two things. Not having the knowledge or the wisdom because I wasn't close to God. But then the other one was lack of discipline. And so what I've come across is that there's three mindsets that we would operate in or that I operated in. And so these are the three that I made up because I just kind of feel like this is what, how I, I operated. Um, so this is the, uh, the operated in, in my eagerness, in my own will, I operated in the I got this mindset, right? Um, the I got this mindset is where 
God does nothing and I do everything. And then I got, there's the, the next one where I operated out of my fears and my anxieties where God got this. That's where God does everything and I do nothing. And the one that provided me with the most peace, where I experienced the most peace, when I actually got out of my way, I operated in the mindset of God invited me. This is where God does everything and I just play my part. Okay, go down, a little, down some memory lane. Uh, throughout my life, I've navigated pride, perfection, machismo, the need to be strong and definitely respected. I had the biggest stacks of chips on my shoulders and you couldn't tell me nothing. Matter of fact, Cassandra doesn't like the saying, but back then I was young and dumb and used to have the saying say, soy nava y que? I'm a nava and what's up? <laughs> and, you see, and you see in that, what's up? Y'all don't know, that, that's, that we about, something's about to pop off, you know what I mean? Um, I prided myself in being tough, you know, and being able to handle my own and, and not needing anyone or anything. I definitely had a mindset of I got this. You see, and I carried that mindset with me throughout my 24 years in the Air Force. As the uh, propulsion flight chief or the supervisor for all the engines, for all the B-52s at Barksdale Air Force Base, um, my main goal was to make sure that the planes were ready to launch, to go drop bombs on bad guys, come back home safe and sound. In those moments, I've had to make uh, critical decisions, on-the-spot decisions, where they had major consequences to include the safety of the pilots and the crew. Um, and if I tell you, in the military, I had to have and I got this mindset. And all the attaboys, awards, and recognition, and rank, all these things only fueled my soy nava y que mindset, and I got this, I'm sorry, my soy nava y que attitude and my I got this mindset. When you're young and dumb, you think that that uh, I got this attitude is uh, a blessing, but the truth it's not. One of the biggest consequences that came from my I got this mindset is that I did everything on my own, on my own strength, and never went to God for anything, but only when trouble hit. And as a result of not living in a, inviting God into my daily life, I've now been, for, hmm, I've been now been forced to learn the lesson of a longing father who wants to be there for his children in the good times and the bads, to celebrate the wins and just to be a shoulder to lean on when things are not going great. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. In my prayer time, I find myself asking God, help me, bro. Like, help me understand. Help me navigate this situation with my family. All I want them to do is bring them into my fold. And in that prayer time, it's like, isn't that what God is saying to me? Can I continue? I, um, let me continue to be transparent with you, man. With the 40 years, 40 plus years of me operating in this, I got this mindset. It should be no surprise to anyone that it's still an ongoing battle. Only this time, doing ministry and with that mindset, only this time I have learned that when I continue to choose my own strength, my own willpower, that even the work that I do for him to honor him is in vain. And that's hard, and that's hard. I've had to learn the difference between doing work for God instead of doing the work of God in me. It, there's a difference. There's a difference. And there's a different sense of peace that you get when you operate in doing the work of God in you. If I'm being completely honest, my, I got this mindset has had, read me, has had me ready to tap out multiple times. Um, but the Holy Spirit reminded me that our God is not a God of confusion. Um, that although he predestined my path to be here and to serve his house, he did not cancel my, main, my primary calling to be the head of my house. Right. And so what I realized is, so it isn't him that needs to change. It isn't his calling on my life that needs to change. It's my mindset that needs to change if I truly want to walk out the calling he has for me. Let me tell you all, the cost, the costs are unreal of having the I got this mindset. And guess what? God never intended us to pay that cost. I'm glad that our father welcomes us back whenever we veer off. Um, I'm glad that he does it. I'm glad his love for us is unconditional. But the sad part is that when we come back, we come back with trauma, bruises, cuts, scrapes that he never intended us to experience, encounter, or to have. So much. And then when I look back, when I look back, I can easily see where almost pridefully say, man, hey, you know what? Yeah, I gave him my time. I gave him my resources. I gave him my energy. I gave all of these things, like almost like, you know, pridefully. 
But then I have to ask myself, what about the hard things? What about the ones that I'm not so willing, willing to admit or to accept? And here's just a few. See, I lost time with my boys as they got older. And guess what? I'm never going to get that time back. You know that stupid country song, Don't Blink? <laughs> that song gets me every time. Every time it gets me. And what I do is I try to share that with people who are um, running in the same rut that I was running in, that have little ones. I say like, hey man, just take the time and enjoy them now because before you know it, they're gone. For years, I gave Cassandra what was left of me while I gave everyone what was the best of me. And babe, I know it. I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man. Uh, babe, I know it wasn't uh, fair and it isn't fair and I'm sorry. And then God, right? Like, what, is, what, what did that do with God? My, I got this mindset. I would just tell you that I am grateful that he loves me unconditionally and that his mercies are new every morning. Because if they weren't, I would, don't know where I would be today. And finally, there's me. I've allowed worry and stress and anxiety to control me, especially in the midnight hour. And he's never intended me to live that way. He's intended me to live a life that's full and full of peace. And then there's my physical fitness. <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all a story. So when I was on active duty, we'd be at the base. Um, we'd go and have lunch. And then we'd have these old retirees that would come onto the base, either go to the commissary, go get their medicines, just do whatever. And then, you know, you think you're on active duty, you're like 10 foot tall and bulletproof. We used to say, man, I'm never gonna let myself get out of shape when I retire. And then here's your boy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and here's your boy. Um, maybe that's a good transition for the next mindset because the next mindset is the complete opposite of the I got this mindset. The next, op the, it's, a, it's a complete opposite. It's the God's got it, it's the God's got it mindset. And what we're trying to say is that when I got it, I'll do everything. When God's got it, I'll do nothing. He'll do it all. And with, you know, with my natural instinct of always wanting to do, I've never spent too much time in the God's got it mindset. But only when anxieties hit and only when insecurities hit is when I operated in that mindset. And can I tell you, as soon as those moments passed, I just felt like this guilt that came over me because I didn't react in my natural instinct. And in those moments, what I've realized is that whether if you operate in the I got this mindset or God's got it mindset, we are truly robbing God from blessing us and blessing others. You know how I know? How many times have y'all felt the Holy Spirit nudge you and say, hey, bro, let me holler at you for a second. And you're like, what, me? And you're like, yeah, I need you to go say an encouraging word. I need you to go say a healing word. I need you to go say something to this person. And then when we choose not to, can I tell you, those are missed opportunities for life change. I know we can easily pick up God's God mindset when we're asked to step out of our comfort zone. And then we try to, to uh, disguise it with uh, some Christian cliches like, y'all ready? Just let go and let God. Jesus, take the wheel. Girl, God's got you, sis. How about I'm trusting God to meet them right where they're at and, make, and meet their every need. But here's one for you. At times we misuse and we quickly say, I'll pray for you. Instead of offering the practical help that comes at a cost to us for something. When the cost of beings Christ's hands and feet outweighs our comfort, it's easy to say God's got it. But what I've come to learn is that Christian action should be based, driven, and motivated by the life that we live of overflow in Christ's grace. But the truth is, is that Christ, Christ's action is also powered by Christ-like love. We're real quick to say, I love you, bro. I love you. Let's not talk about it. Let's be about it. And here's another one. When God, with a God's got it mindset, are we truly using our gifts to advance his kingdom? Are we just, are we just saying that we are? You know what I mean? Like there's a big difference. I mean, there's action and then there's words. The mindset that I've seen to struggle with the most though is the God invited me mindset. The mindset of where um, 
God doesn't expect me to carry the load. He just expects me to play my part. And you would think that this would be a mindset that I could easily adapt to and easily take into. And again, since especially he's only asking me to pay my, play my part, he's not asking me to carry the load. When I was thinking about, what am I going to say? What is this one called? God, God, God invited me? I really had, hey, I'm with the DJ mindset. Because we all know that when you go to a party and you say you're with the DJ, you're just meant there just to have a good time and relax. You're not meant to host the party. With all the years of thinking that I had to be tough, that I had to leave from the front, and all the years of living a life of just trying, just trying to make my life look like and be like what I thought it should be, those things became the addiction that I couldn't break away from. And to be honest, first and foremost, I love y'all. But to be honest, it has been especially hard in this season of my life where I feel like I'm doing all that I can do to provide a place and a space for people to come and meet God and have the life change that I experienced. But Pastor Trustin says all the time, hey, this isn't my church, this is God's church. That's a truth. But here's another truth, is that whatever he has planned for it, it'll be with or without me. You see, while we're doing his work, he doesn't need us, he just invites us. Yes, there's, there's being proactive, but then there's a difference of just overstepping and being too far ahead of him. That's not where he's asked us to be. He's asked us to be side by side with him. However, I will tell you that through the power of the Holy Spirit working with me, your boy has been able to take some intentional time to abide amongst all the chaos. Um, I took some time uh, to attend a retreat called Tres Dias. And uh, I'll tell you what, th that, that was life-changing for me. And then even so, like even to the last minute, I was telling Pastor Whitney, like, I don't even know if I'm going to go. I don't know if I'm going to go to camp. we got too much going on here. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm so glad that I made the decision to go. And abiding in those two times, God spoke specifically, directly, and most intimately to me in the most that I've ever experienced in my life. And then not only that, he allowed me to witness some life change in my nephews and my nieces that I would have missed if I would have just said, I got it. But because of these experiences and the blessings that come with a God invited me mindset, I now do my best to trust him, to invite him, and to let go because I really want to continue to live and, and rest in his blessings. But I will tell you, in Philippians 3.12, this, I mean, I said this scripture in Father's Day of 2018, and it, and it still hits me because it's still so true. In Philippians 3.12.13, it says, Paul says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I, I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess the perfection for which Jesus Christ first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. And to that, I say me too, me too. In these last verses of Psalms 127, three through five, it reads, behold children, behold, children are a heritage and a gift from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is filled with them, they would not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies at the gate. Now, I know just for me, I mean, th I mean this, this verse kind of just pulls at my heartstrings because of my kids. And I know that it's going to pull a lot of heartstrings of y'all. And the reason why that I know that is because we spent time as a staff and as elders, and we prayed over all the prayers that were marked on this thing. What we realized is that there was a, there was a common thread of requests, a common thread of God's request to do the impossible, and that was for family unity. The words that were simply written down on here, to include mine, they're real cries for God's help. They're real cries for God to make the impossible possible. And we can't negate the value that those words have. Over the years, I've come to truly understand the value of speaking truth and love. Because what I know is too much truth and not enough love causes damage. And too much love and not enough truth also causes damage. And so 
the only way that I knew how to navigate with that balance is by inviting God in. I couldn't do it on my own because it was against my, my own natural instinct. I, I just couldn't do it. You see, and I got this completely wrong with my boys. You know, I look back now and I wish I would have invited God into my life sooner. I wish I would, I would have known him sooner because all I did used to respond to the old famous words that our parents say, because I said so. And as long as you're leaving under my roof, you're going to do as I say. See, I was fueled by this concept of what I used to call strong love. Hate me now, love me later. And I couldn't be more far off. I mean, that's, that's the definite wrong mindset to have when you try to raise a family. But that's what I knew. That's what I grew up in. You know, that's what we had to do to be tough. And that's what I just mimicked. It's because I didn't know the love of God then. Too much of my truth and not enough of my love has led to what feels like a lifetime of regret. But God, but God reminded me that I have created a gap of the old me and the new me. And I need to stop answering to the things of the past. And I know this truth just isn't for me. It's for you. It, it truly is. I've apologized and asked for forgiveness for the things that I've done. And even for the things that I didn't even know I did as a father. And I wish I could tell you that the distance between me and my boys has gotten smaller. But the truth is my prayers have only gotten bigger. And just like you, Cassandra and I, we're standing on God's promises. Yeah, we've all heard of long suffering. When it comes to our kids, the suffering that comes with long suffering couldn't seem any longer, especially as we pray and hope for the return of our prodigal sons and daughters. In the moments of long suffering, it's easy to get caught up in all the emotions and the questions of what could I have done better? What more can I do? Was my best good enough? And the only response to those type of questions is self-forgiveness. We got to learn to forgive ourselves first and because how are we going to operate with anything? If we can't forgive ourselves, how do we expect them, our children to forgive us? I mean, that's been one of the hardest lessons learned. You know what I mean? That's, it's, it's hard. And here's the other thing is that if we can trust God to do the healing in other people and other things, Pastor Tim said this thing to us. He says, hey, man, um, faith is believing that God will do it for somebody else. And hope is believing that God will do it for you. Yeah. And so when we operate in these things of, of past offense, we've got to ask ourselves, what's weaker, our faith or our hope? See, and I really, uh, I thought this was going to be the end of the message. I'd like to invite my wife, Cassandra, to come up for this. Um, but my heart wouldn't let me, um, if I'm being honest. Um, I really thought that I could just end it there and kind of be done with it. But the truth is, is uh, the last two verses of Psalms 127 says, like, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed, is the man, how blessed is the man whose quiver is filled with them. See, some of y'all wrote down the names of your children and family members as prayer requests. And like you and Cassandra, we placed them. We placed them on this thing as well. And then, so I can't help but think of like arrows, arrows, arrows. What do they do? They defend. They protect. They're our legacy. And when life doesn't turn out the way that we want to, um, we've kind of blamed ourselves. We've kind of like took the brunt of it and, and did all the things that we could try to do to, you know, create some restoration within our family. But in all the trying and all the doing, um, all we did was create more offense. Um, not only did we create more offense, we kind of distanced the gap. And all we're trying to do is just love. And when it's not being returned, it's hard and we blame ourselves and all the things like that. But what God spoke to us this past summer was that, um, is this time for us to lay them down? And so like you, when you put the names of your children on this podium of prayer requests, we've put the names of our two older boys and our daughter-in-law right alongside the names of your family members. And I will tell you this, that, um, It was like it was, we were mourning, but the peace that came with just saying, you know what, God, I've done all I can do. It's on you. Right. God, you invited me to be a part of their life, 
Because as much as I love them, as much as I want them to live life right, as much as I want them to be fulfilled and have a successful life, God wants it even more. <sighs> yeah. But I'll tell you what, even though we've placed them on the podium and left them there for, for prayer and for, and, and here's the thing is, we've cast our cares on the Jesus and we know that he will sustain us and he will sustain and answer all the other prayer requests that are along this podium. And that's the truth. That's the truth. But in the meantime, in the meantime, while we're waiting and hoping and praying for the impossible to become possible, just like y'all are, God has provided other arrows in our lives. You see, he's brought in arrows uh, in our lives to pour into. It gave us daughters that we never even had. Um, he gave us arrows to, to mentor, to help, to navigate life with, to celebrate the winds of life. Um, we've had other arrows just come and just do life with, celebrate the celebrations. This to do life, to work with, to grow with, to get smart with, but more importantly, just to, uh, to pour into us and to be there, you know, at times of need and times of trouble, they're there for us. But more importantly, man, we'll just to be able to say like, hey, son, this is the direction I would see you to go. And then for Aaron, just to not only be a father to me, but to be a father to my boys. You see, and there's, here's the truth. Is that we know if we are faithful with these, that God is going to be faithful with ours. I just want y'all to know that some of your prayers are out of your hands as well. And it's time just to invite them in, to trust them, and to let go, and then rest in his blessings and in his timing. And what I'm going to do is, uh, while the band plays, if today's, today's message spoke to you in any way, and if... Uh, I'm going to invite you to come up to the altar right now and surrender, to, to invite them in, to trust them, to let go. But more importantly, to give you the strength to lay them down and to pick up the ones that he's put in your path. We can stay defeated in what seems like a dysfunctional relationship or we can do and continue to do what God's called us to do and that's just to pour out to others and lead him, lead them to him. I'm a dad of three boys, but God has made me a father to many more. So right now, I invite y'all to come. I mean, I love y'all, and I want y'all to know that I want y'all to experience the peace that comes with just letting go because you've already done your part. There's a difference in just letting go and not doing your part. But when you've done your part and you let go, there's peace. And I want you to experience that peace. So as a band plays, please come forward. Invite them in. Trust them. Let go. And ask him to reveal what arrows do you already have in your hand that you don't even know.